Hey there, it's B. I've got a message for y'all today. I've been feeling so deeply within my being. There are so many people right now, so many people that are full of questions, that are full of hope, that are uh, praying and begging for a shift. And this morning in my time with God, um, I was really going deep on what's the way out of this? You know, I think, I think most people have realized at this point that we've been living in the land of Oz, right? Those of you that don't know, if you haven't read the books, like I highly recommend, I didn't know this, um, go read the Wizard of Oz, go read the books because the books are very different than, um, the movie, but in the books and the Wizard of Oz, when they reach the Emerald City, the reason why the city looks green is because everybody that enters the city is outfitted with these glasses that are green. They're outfitted with lenses. If you're going to live in the land of Oz, you have to be willing to see through their lens. You have to be willing to see through their perception. And we've been in a really interesting pattern for the last 400 years or so, humanity has been focused on conquering, on um, advancements, on technology, on, on pillaging, on control. And in this time of seeking and searching and science, we have completely neglected our relationship with God. So I've got a message today and I've got some stuff written down because I want to make sure that I hit um, all of this, but I know that a lot of people are looking to find their way out of Oz. They're looking to find a way out of the lies, out of the deception, out of the trauma loop matrix that is literally designed to keep you small and stuck. And I know uh, for me, y'all, I spent years searching for the path out of there. I spent years walking along the route to recovery. And you know what? No matter what I did, no matter what I tried, success was short-lived and I felt like I was always having to search and always having to seek for something else. And no matter what I did and no matter what I tried, like things might help for a little while, but it wouldn't last. It wasn't a, a lasting change. I was still um, swimming in the muck and the mire. And, and maybe you've been there. So God says this morning, while well, we were uh, hanging out, he says people are realizing that many things that they've done while searching and seeking only brought temporary success and fulfillment. They've been manifesting something, which by the way, that means to make visible. That part is not your job. Manifesting in the law of attraction is a lie. It is an unnecessary step. It's not even your piece in the puzzle, okay? Um, but they've been manifesting something at the cost of something else. They've been operating in the land and the space and the state of being of Oz. So if Oz is built on lies and it's built on deception and it's built on death and it's built on fear and you've been trying to create a life out of Oz's rules and their recipe book. What do you think you're going to get? I mean, probably exactly what the recipe is telling you it's going to cook, right? Okay. <laughs> so I was talking to God and I'm like, gosh, uh, I so relate to this feeling. The longer that I lived in Oz, the more that I felt that I had a hole in my soul. There was this empty space, this, this longing. It felt like a a bottomless pit. I felt like a leaky bucket. I felt like there wasn't ever uh, any amount of love that someone could pour into me. It just seemed to, to ooze right out. I had all of these big dreams and all of these big visions and all of these ideas, but every time I went to go take a step, the fear was stopping me. It was pulling me back. Maybe you've been there. See, it felt like they, those things were not possible because based on the rule book that I was reading from, 
Um, I just, I just didn't have that in me. Maybe you can relate to that. God says, God says, do not give up hope. There is a revival that is happening now. I don't know if y'all have seen it. There is a revival that is happening right now. The Holy Spirit is spreading like wildfire, just like we knew would happen. You know, when people get into a sufficient amount of pain, that's when they're finally willing to change. That's when they're finally willing to discover something else. And that's what's happening right now. So if you've had a hole in your soul, if you've had a missing piece within your being, if there are dreams that you have dusted, uh, you put up on the shelf, it's time to take them down and dust them off. Okay. If you have worked at your relationship before and it fell on deaf ears, the change didn't happen. If you have tried to heal your body before and all of those doctors and all the people that you were going to didn't have an answer for you. If you've tried before, God is saying, try again, do it again, do it again. But this time put God in the middle of it and see what happens. See, when we try to shift without being plugged into the proper source, when we, when we try to create a change, um, but we're plugged into the wrong thing, we're suddenly trying to siphon energy off of a swamp or a desert. That's all the land of Oz is. It's a swamp. So it's filled with trauma and drama and seedy characters and uh, mistruths and faulty information and error. It is deficient. And when you're trying to source your energy from that, the only thing that you are going to get is more of that. Now, when you unplug from all of that, when you unplug from the land of Oz, when you come back to the garden of God, the kingdom of God that is within you, when you allow the Holy Spirit to wash over you, when you allow yourself to be changed from the inside out and you reconnect the truth of who you are, the truth of your being, your true self with the true source. Now, I'm not just talking about uh, the universe, which if you've been operating out of strictly um the self that you became in the land of Oz in the trauma in the trauma and drama. Um, sure, going to the universe is certainly a step up. But what I'm talking about is tapping into the source of the universe, the source of all things. All right. So so many people um, have been looking to make a significant shift, but they've been plugged into the wrong source. They have the wrong energy there's a spiritual hierarchy there's a family tree all right and if you are trying to create something off of a lesser power but you're trying to create a whole new world world creating power you actually need to go to the true source does that make sense okay let me see what i wrote down here this is a time of revelation and revival revelation means that your eyes are opened that you are now beginning to see are we not beginning to see the truth of what things have been we have lived in a production studio they put lenses over our eyes to alter our perception and now the truth is being revealed and we've trusted things that were created by men and women, um, by, by people that wanted to control us. We've plated ourselves up and served us to the enemy. We've bought into his schemes. We've given power to authorities and entities that want to feed upon us. We've looked to those that want to kill us and to control us for our sustenance and our safety. And we wonder why we have situations like we're seeing in the world right now. We've searched for solutions in a land that wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And we wonder why we feel dead. Look, you're never going to find life. You're never going to feel alive. You're never going to be revived and lit up from the inside if you are trying to seek a solution from a space that wants to kill you. 
You are never going to be filled if you're trying to drink from a desert. You are never going to be healthy and well if you're siphoning your life force from a swamp. And we have been lied to, manipulated, uh, propagandized, censored, deceived, distracted, in order to keep us sucking from the swampland of Oz rather than tapping into the true source that's available to us. That's available. And if you're listening to this, you know that you're feeling something here. Or you wouldn't be watching this. And this message is not for everybody. I am not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody's coming home to the garden or the kingdom. And that's just fine with me. All right. But for those of you that have ears to hear, let you hear. The reason why you're not happy, the reason why you're not healed, the reason why you're not thriving, the reason why is because you are so far from the garden that the gardener does not have access to you to provide you sustenance, nourishment, tending, care, water, sunlight. I got to tell you a story. So we were on the road for a few years and... Um, Gosh, it's coming up on two years in May. We pulled into beautiful Northwest Arkansas, and it's amazing here. Like, this is basically where I live. Y'all, do you like my painting? Can't really see the water. Can I tilt it without knocking everything over? All right, that's basically where I live. It's wonderful. It's amazing. So we pulled in here, and we have been um, building out a shed to tiny house conversion. So it's an extra large tiny house, and we're starting a homestead. And... It's a dream that I've had my entire life from the time I was itty, itty, bitty. I just had this feeling that there was a different way to live, that there was something else that we were being called to. Like, certainly, you didn't have all of these wonderful, talented, powerful people be born to just, like, live in some cracker box houses that all look the same, that are all made out of ticky-tacky, that are all just in a row, right? Right? And I just don't think that we were born to do things that don't light us up. I don't feel like we were born to just exist in trauma and drama. I don't think that we're just here to pay bills and die. Um, I think we were sold a lie to get us stuck in a slave system. And I've seen this my entire life, and I've had this dream of having a different way of being, a different way of living, being free my entire life. And so in 2019... Thankfully, a perfect storm of events totally shook my whole reality. See, I had this feeling that something else was available, that something could be different. But I didn't know how to get there, but I knew that I wanted it. I knew I wanted a life that was true for me. I knew that I wanted a healthy relationship, which I hadn't seen in my life, that was never modeled to me. I knew I wanted health in my body, but I was bedridden. And I was in excruciating pain most of the time. I knew I wanted to do fulfilling work in the world, but everything I seemed to do ended up being a dud. Well, in 2019, I had a perfect storm of events. Um, I had untangled a bunch in my life, and I'd set myself free in a lot of ways. And I had a perfect storm of events that came up that rocked my reality. And I'm so glad it did because it began a purge of everything that is not me, that is not true. And it was the beginning of the dream that I've had since I was little. So we took off in, an, well, in a tent and then an RV and we traveled and we saw all kinds of beautiful scenery. And we met people that felt like chosen family, like soul family, like we were coming back home. And we were invited to stay here. So we've been building this place out. And I hadn't gardened, really, despite wanting to, um, since I was little. When I was little, I gardened with my grandpa, and I loved it. I loved getting to be part of the miracle of life. I loved planting seeds and getting to eat this delicious food that was grown with love, that was vi vibrantly colored and full of flavor. There was something about it that brought me to life. So last year, I really wanted a garden. 
I really wanted to grow something. See, where I lived before in the city, it just wasn't a hospitable place to grow stuff. Like, I probably could have. I had a big backyard. But I was so overextended and I was so frazzled, I couldn't even wrap my head around thinking about that. And the act of it probably would have brought me back to life, but I just couldn't foresee it happening. So last year when we got here and we realized that um, we have the privilege of having 30 acres to play around on and to grow some things, it was like, well, gosh, I wonder what we can grow. And there's a, there's a parable, Luke 8, 5. Jesus said, a sower went out to sow his seed. As he sowed, some fell along the path and were trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil and yielded a hundredfold. That's basically a story about um, how we decided to plant. <laughs> we got this cool kit and it had a bunch of different seeds, like things I'd never even heard of before, um, because the things that were given in the grocery store are just a tiny, tiny fraction of what's actually available. Our food system's really crazy. But I was just curious, like, what can you grow and where can you grow it? So we planted and threw seed, like, all over the place. And some of it fell on rock and never took root, never took off. Some of it was planted in other places where there were already too many other things growing. So there was too much competition and it got choked out before it could get started. Some of it got washed away in the storms and the rain and the wind. Some of it we planted, um, we tried to do Garden Hill up here. Uh, but there's Greenbrier and Greenbrier is the nastiest vine. I've ever seen. It's covered in thorns. It's in the poison ivy family. It looks really like in the summertime, it gets all of this lush, lush foliage. So it looks really alive, but it chokes everything out and it's vicious and it's pokey and it shoots out these little underground root shoots and it'll sprout up somewhere else. And it has a big root ball and it's basically indestructible. So we tried to plant things in this place where there were all of these thorny vines. And then, of course, the thorny vines choked out the things that we were trying to grow. It's a lot like Oz. It's a lot like Oz. A lot of Oz's characters are very Greenbrier-ish. This stuff's gnarly. Man, you, like, you go to pull it out and the thorn will poke you and the little edge... The tip will get stuck underneath your skin and it's full of venom and it'll itch and it'll create a bump and oh my gosh. It's horrendous. And some of y'all are trying to grow the, the life that you know is possible in places like that. See, so we've got this one plot that is fenced in, that we built raised beds in, that we put good soil in that had a water spigot that was attached to the well with the hose. And then we had a whole bunch of other seed that we tried to plant all over the place that was far from the garden. And all of the seed that we tried to plant that was far from the garden either didn't take root, never took off, was choked out by vines, was washed away with the storm, or <laughs> when July hit. July hit and we had an entire month of zero rain and 105 degrees and everything cooked. And even in the garden, the well with the spigot, the well dried up. The creek was dry. We didn't have a water source to be able to water the seed. And so what got priority during this, this season of drought, during this time of ex extreme heat, crazy heat, uh, what got priority was what was in the garden, right? Like if I'm carrying water to nourish something, I'm suddenly not walking around all 30 acres trying to water stuff. So what was in the garden was what actually got to have the nourishing, tending, sustaining care of the gardener. 
See, God says that the problem is, is that y'all are trying to grow stuff. You're trying to create a fruitful future far from the garden. And then you're wondering why you're not becoming deeply rooted. You're wondering why you don't have enough water and you feel like there's no sustenance for you. You are allowing vines and other plants that you shouldn't be growing around. You're trying to grow there and you're, you're wondering why you can't grow. Did y'all know you cannot grow? Do not try to grow squash and cucumbers next to each other. See, the cucumbers attract a kind of bug that kills the squash so that the cucumbers can have what they need. Some of you would be so much better off if you would stop trying uh, to grow in a space with people that don't want you to grow. Some of you will never actually find your dream becoming fruit until you're willing to take the leap and leave the space that's not suitable for growing. All right. This is the last thing I'm going to say in this video today. If you're a parent, you've hung out with kids, you will understand this message. You know how like when you ask your kid to do something and you try to ask, okay, five minute warning and then we're going to get cleaned up and we're going to go or you're going to get dressed. Okay, three minute warning. All right, now it's time. And then it's like, look, it's time to go. Get your shoes on and let's go. And suddenly your eyes are flared and the mom or dad voice is popping out because they weren't listening. Well, that's what's happening right now. The whole reason why the world is crazy right now and the reason why God is allowing it is because he's using his dad voice. Like, wake up, people. Wake up, is what he's saying. Y'all have put so much power and so much trust into all of these other entities. He showed me uh, all of these three-letter agencies. I'm not going to say them all because I'm shadow banned enough. You've placed all of this power into all of these three-letter agencies that are literally designed to edge God out. And you've forgotten the three letters that could actually do something about the thing. See, God is good orderly direction. And it doesn't exist somewhere outside of you. It's not about religion. It's not about going to a building, though I do highly recommend that you find some people that you can fellowship with. But it's about a relationship. Uh, an intimate relationship within yourself. And look, if you've got a, a feeling of a hole in the soul or you've tried some things and they haven't worked out and you're still feeling that pull, it's because God is calling you deeper into relationship with him. He wants to plant you in the garden. He wants to uproot you from wherever you're trying to get your grow on that's not working. And he wants to bring you back close and into his care. And when you come back into the garden with God and you allow him to be the gardener, you allow him to weed out the things that are not serving you. You allow him to weed out the things that have you feeling small. You allow him to prune you back and prune off the places so that you can actually uh, come back more fruitful, more thriving. See, in the, before the winter hit, we trimmed back our asparagus till they were just little nubs, but now that spring is coming, new life is beginning. If we hadn't trimmed it back, it would have broken off in the winter. See, so God is a good, good gardener, and he knows exactly the work that needs to be done within your soul. His spirit will come and will reside within you and will light the way and will show you the path to every single thing that you're desiring. And God is a good, good gardener. He is a good, good father. He will not give you 
what you are not yet ready for. He will lead you to the lessons that you need to develop the character so that he, you can handle the blessing that he's bringing your way. And that's the piece. So you might have tried something before. Maybe you did the diet. Maybe you did the exercise routine. Maybe you hired a coach. Maybe you've been working on your relationship. Maybe you got a new job or you started a new business or you made the move. And yet something is still missing. There's still a missing piece. I'm going to challenge you today to try it again, but this time in the garden with God. This time actually be willing to walk hand in hand the way that we were designed. With the one that knows your heart. With the one that knows the way. So I kind of touched on this yesterday, but um, a couple days ago. Y'all, I started this journey as such a skeptic. I was stubborn and skeptical and I stomped my feet and I didn't want to go because I had all of this evidence of why I shouldn't. See, but all of my evidence was based on propaganda from Oz. It was uh, laden with error and mistruth. It was missing pieces. It was filled with lies of omission that were designed to keep me small and stuck. And, and honestly, that's why self-help doesn't work. Self-development doesn't work. Like I said, diets don't work. It even has die in the word. Like, come on now. It's why none of that works is because you, the, the piece of you that will actually make you full is found in the Father. It's found in the source of the all. It's how we were designed. We were actually designed to have a missing piece, to have a hole in your soul. And the reason why you have a hole in the soul is that so you go searching for it. So you go searching for the Father that will fill you up. See, if you weren't hungry, you'd have no reason to go to the fridge to try to find some food. If, if you were born into Oz and Oz actually provided everything that you need to be happy, healthy, and whole, you'd never go looking. So thank you, God. Like, thank you for the fact that I was born in the land of Oz in trauma and drama and lies and deception in a desert. Thank you, because that place beat me to a bloody pulp. That, pay, that place robbed from me the essence of my being. It left me for dead. The people there that were supposed to support me didn't. Okay? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because if I had actually found what I was seeking there, if I had actually found sustenance in Oz, then I would be forever trapped in a slave system. That is literally designed to kill, steal, and destroy. And instead, because I had a rock bottom, because I had the gift of desperation. God will give that to you, by the way. Because I had the gift of desperation, I was willing to go search outside of that. I was willing to go seek. I was willing to do the tough thing. And the tough thing in a world that wants you to be cocky and conceited and misindependent or whatever. The tough thing to do is to actually honor the source of your strength. But that's the key. See, everybody's looking to everything outside of them horizontally like this. And they're forgetting to honor the source of it all. They edge God out to distract you. They get you hung up on ego things. That's edge God out on things that you think, well, well, gosh, if I had that, then I'd be happy. Well, gosh, if I could just accomplish this, then maybe I'd be enough. Oh, gosh, if I had that car. And look, the truth is, yeah, a new car is cool for like an afternoon. And then you're used to it again. 
then yeah, it's fun to accomplish things to see what you're capable of, but then you're used to it again. And yeah, it's great to score the guy that you got, you've got a crush on. Cool. But then you get into the relationship and it's like, whoa. Still got a hole in my soul. Still don't know how to feel, feel it. See, that's where we've got to come out of ego. We've got to stop edging God out. We've got to stop being distracted. We've got to leave the land of Oz. We've got to come back to the garden with God. And God wants to do a new work in you. He wants to do a new thing in you. He says the reason why it didn't work is because you planted the seed on the rocky garden hill brook with a whole bunch of green briar. But if you actually let come back to the garden and let me prepare a place for you, I know what you need to grow. I know the right kind of soil. I know much, how much sunlight you need. I know how much shade you need. I know you don't tolerate the heat, so I'm going to plant you over here in this part of the garden where you can thrive. I know that you don't get along with this plant, so I will keep them far from you so that their bugs don't infect you and kill you. I know what water you need and what nutrients you need in your soil. I know when you need to be picked, and I know when you need to be pruned, and I know how to weed the things out of your heart that are keeping you from flourishing in your fruitful future. I know the way. I have a hope and a plan for your future, God says. Above and beyond that, he says, you were created for a moment such as this. See, I think there's been a bunch of sleeper cells, and I think I'm one of them. I think that God has been secretly... <laughs> covertly calling people out of situations that weren't serving them and he's kept us hidden in a in a cocoon of sorts see when a butterfly crawls into its cocoon it completely disintegrates it becomes goo it ceases to be a caterpillar it is a caterpillar no more and god has had many of us in a cocoon he's had many of us disintegrating we were integrated into oz into their standardized system. You were integrated into a space that wanted to make you the same as everybody else. And God has been disintegrating you. And it's why your circle has shrunk. And it's why people you thought would be in your life have been pulled away. It's why all of your stuff, all of your insecurity, which by the way, you were insecure because you were plugged into the wrong source. The connection with with God wasn't secure, and so you felt insecure, but God's been unplugging that. He wants to do that work in you. He wants to do that for you. And he's had you in the dark. He's had, like, Joseph in the dungeon. He had Joseph in the dungeon for, for two years. He had him in the dark. And, and while he was in the dungeon, he was doing this work within him so that he would be prepared. When he came out of the dungeon... Joseph was suddenly exalted to a position of power because God had had time to refine him so that he could share God's vision. So God's been refining you. Nothing that has happened has been on accident. Nothing happens. I'm going to say this again. This one kind of blew my mind. Nothing not a thing happens in God's kingdom without God's will. Now, to my little human brain that thinks that I need like peaches and rainbows and sugar and a cherry on top all the damn time. That's like, <laughs> hold up, wait a minute. Wait a minute, hold up. <sighs> See, but the bigger part of me and what God has been working through me is that, no, nothing happens outside of his will. See, what God understands, uh, what a good, good father understands is that sometimes the best motivator, the best consequence, the best instigator, the best thing to get your butt up and moving is a dad voice or some pain. Right? I said I had a gift of desperation. I was in so much pain. I was finally willing to do something different. 
So why does God allow crazy things to happen? Well, number one, we have free will. We have a choice in who we're serving. We have a choice in what source we're tapping into. Am I choosing to try to siphon energy off of other people? Am I choosing to try to get my sustenance from the world? That's a free will choice, and I can make that all day long. And you know what? That really works for some people. They are not the chosen ones. They are not children of God. That's okay. Because it's a choice. It's a free will decision. Are you going to follow that path, which is a really wide super highway? Okay? The the path, the roadway through Oz, it's a 16 lane. Like, if y'all have ever driven through L.A., Oh my gosh, I got caught on an L.A. highway pulling a trailer once, and it was the most terrifying thing ever. Whew. Everybody's like zipping around me at like 80 miles an hour, and I'm trying to get over a lane, and everybody's going their own way, and there's all these overpasses and turnoffs, and whew, that's Oz. And Oz is built for speed. It's got all the fancy cars on it, okay. And there's lots of turnoffs and there's lots of different side streets you can go take in the land of Oz, but they ultimately all lead to the same place. McDonald's and a Starbucks. A shopping center. A house that people work freaking 80 hours a week to be able to afford to live in. That's where Oz goes. See, but... Jesus said the gate is narrow. Not everybody is going to choose to take the walk back to the garden of God. But look, if you've been trying all the things that Oz said to do and none of them are working, it's because you're actually one of the chosen ones that's meant to go through the narrow gate back to the garden of God. Okay, you're actually meant to leave those old systems that are no longer working. Okay, goodness, like, caveat, they're not working because they're designed to not work. All right, like, weird to me, because my heart just doesn't operate like this, it's like, but it's actually been designed to not work. It's actually been designed to keep people small and stuck and sick and scared. It's actually working totally by design. That's how the, the land of Oz is designed. It is a complete inversion of how we are meant to live. So I don't know about you, but I, when I lived in Denver, when I lived in, in the city, when I lived in Oz, when I lived in the concrete jungle, um, there's not much life there. Now, there are some places where they've done a little bit better job, but... Even in those places, like when we were in Southern California, there's more nature than there is available in Denver. Um, but when we were living in Southern California, we met a couple that they'd both been working like 40, 60, 80, 100 hours a week to be able to afford this cool house that they had that was 11 miles from the beach. And we said, oh, my gosh, isn't this beach just wonderful? And they said, yeah, it is. This is the first time we've been here. And I was flabbergasted because like y'all have been working here to live here, to be close to this. And y'all haven't even been here in over a decade. Meanwhile, I had chosen to walk with God and God planted me on the same beach, living in the same space without a job. Weird. God has a way and it is not the world's way and it doesn't operate like the world and all the things that you think that you have to do woulda coulda shoulda in order to have it happen that's just not how God works he wants to surprise and delight you he wants to see you flourish you are no good if you are frazzled and freaking out all the time God doesn't want that for you. That is an operation of Oz. That is a state of being of Oz. Okay? God wants to lead you 
through green pastures. He wants you to sit and rest beside still waters. He wants to nourish you. And several years of wandering around and spending a lot of time in nature reminded me of the true nature that we are intended to embody. The birds don't worry about where their food is coming from. The trees don't argue over sunshine. They don't compete with each other. Now, like, on the contrary, <laughs> they there's a support system. The trees speak to each other in their roots. They're a family. They're connected. We're not intended to live that way. So whatever you've been doing, whatever you've been trying to heal from, whatever thing has been uh, keeping you up at night, whatever thing that might be, I just invite you. I know you've probably done all the things, tried all the stuff. I just invite you to try it again. But this time, try it again and invite God into the middle of it. Look, that was when I finally found healing from the traumatic things that were eating me alive. That was when I finally found the fullness of my self-esteem and who I really am. That's when my body began to heal itself. And like now, y'all, I eat a lot of food. <laughs> um, for someone that grew up, like I grew up with body dysmorphic disorder and bulimia and alcorexia. That's like when you don't eat all day so you can drink more calories at night. I don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> I did all those things. I was a personal trainer. I busted my butt. I did so much. You know what the answer was? I, I needed to come back to being full of love. I needed, I needed, and it wasn't me. I needed God to fill me up because I didn't even know what love was. I didn't know what that meant. I had a baseball bat and I was beating myself over the head with it. I needed help. I needed help. And the, the moment that I was willing to actually just accept that help, and by the way, it blooms from the inside. It's not something outside that you can find, but it blooms from the inside. The moment that I was willing to find that, like all these other things that I was trying to change, they just started to fix themselves. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know the last time I went to the gym, which... Like for people that used to know me <laughs> back when I was Wonder Woman. Um, I don't have to worry about that anymore. My body uses the fuel that it needs as it needs it. And I've fallen into the perfect size and being for me and I'm comfortable in my skin. I used to be riddled with insomnia and fear and doubt and um, the voices they would just chatter at me and they would get so loud they were so loud and I did everything to try to to numb them out I mean gosh at different points in my life I've shared this before but I've been addicted I've tried to drown it out I got divorced I like changed all the external things what what finally made the difference was to stop seeking solutions that were like out here in the world but to seek a solution here within all right, before I go, thanks for joining me. All this has been really fun. Feeling amazing. Oh, I gotta get it finished. Um. Oh yeah, I was gonna show you this. Look, this is what's happening. I almost threw this away. My daughter got these flowers. I almost threw these away because look, you see all this dead. I almost threw them away. But look at this. It's not dying at all. Look at that little life. Look at that little thing just wanting to bloom away right there. That's you. All right, you're not you're not dead. Look at these stems. They're still green. I could probably plant this. You still have life. You want to come back to life. You want to be revived. That's why you've got the feeling. It's why you've got the pull. It's because you know that there's something more. You know that there's something more. All right, so here's the dealio. Even though it's an inside job, and even though... Um, the answers aren't going to be found in the world around you. Sometimes it's really hard to see things that are in your blind spots, right? Like I, I can't see stuff that's back here. I just don't know. 
Um, a lot of times you'll get yourself to a certain point, but it's about as far as you can get yourself until you have some help. I mean, goodness, like sometimes we just need help. I wouldn't try to move this big old couch by myself. I need some help. Okay. Um, sometimes you need someone that has been there, done that, that has gotten out of that to show you the way. And sometimes you need someone that can love you while you learn to love yourself. I know I certainly did. So sometimes along your journey, you're going to require a Sherpa, someone that has the, the pack and the goodies and the gear and they know the route um, so that you can take this journey within yourself so you can get to the truth so that you can shed the trauma so that you can sleep again. And then that's really the basis of a whole host of other things. Um, getting to a place of peace where you can sleep again, where you're not in such pain so that you can think again, so that your creativity can come back online, so that your essence can come back online, so that you're not so stuck and trapped because you're not meant to be there. Okay, and whatever, whatever your past has, has brought your way, whatever it's piled up on you, look, your past does not dictate your future. It just simply does not. It was something that happened. It's something that um, altered who you were, certainly. Just like when people come into our lives and we have chemistry with them, it shifts something. It shifts something within us. We're different. Okay? You're different after the trauma. You're different after the grief. It's literally finding, I hate this term because they've overused it, but finding a new normal. But I found that those things that we've been through, if we can grow through what we go through, we can find ourselves actually so much bigger, so much brighter, so much better than we were before. I, if, if I hadn't gone through everything that I had gone through, I wouldn't be who I am today. And I've reached a place of just absolute gratitude for that. Because today I'm completely free. I literally, I just do what I want when I want to do it. If I've chosen to come do something, it's because I've wanted to be there. I've chosen it. And you can get to a place in your life where you're operating from that place as well. And I got to tell you, it is way more fulfilling than operating from a space of, of fear or lack or scarcity. Okay. It is so much more fun to move from freedom. And freedom is your birthright. It's the thing that you're actually here to have. And the moment that you find it, you're suddenly going to be equipped to then turn around and go help somebody else get through something similar. All right. All of it had a purpose and none of it was in vain. And you can reach a place where you actually appreciate it, like truly have gratitude for the grit that it gave you. I've got a few different ways to work with me. I've got a lot of things in the works. I'm so excited. Like creativity is flowing. Um, number one, you can come and you can subscribe at my Substack. So it's the B space dot substack dot com. And all of my longer writings are going there because the Facebook King doesn't um, like to show my stuff to people. So all my longer stuff is going there. Substack dot com. You can subscribe. I super appreciate any subscriptions. Y'all are really helping to move things forward. I've got a heart and a vision for feeding people. I've got a heart and a vision for giving back to the community um, and for moving this healing forward. So if you subscribe, thank you a gazillion times. You're helping to get this work in the world. You're helping me to write my book and you're helping us to figure out how to grow a whole bunch of food. Cool. Um, number two, I'm on YouTube. This video will end up there. You can find me there, the B space. Also, you can go to my website, www.thebspace.com. I've got huh, uh, my program, Uproot and Flourish. This is the thing that changed my life. And it's different. Um, it's deeper. It's more embodied. I've now lived the experience of uprooting and flourishing. And I'm so excited because I've been uprooted, I've been replanted, I've been nourished, and now is my time to flourish. And so if you're jumping in on the bandwagon right now, and you're going to come along for this ride, I'm so excited because I'm going to show you behind the scenes, step by step, how I'm creating 
um, this bold, free, creative, fun life I get to live. So that's super cool. Um, Uproot and Flourish. It's a 12-week program. I do have, it's a group experience. I've packaged it so that it doesn't matter where you are in your journey. It is a feasible thing. Okay. Um, I've got it priced right now at $333 for the whole 12 weeks. I've got it broken down. You could do a payment plan for $111 a month. That is less than one session of therapy. We will meet every single week for a group class and a hot seat coaching session. And I promise you, you are going to have breakthrough. You are going to experience such a significant shift for getting your butt in that seat. All right. Um, the cool thing about a group is we actually get to then build a community that's doing life together. So when you're choosing to do this and you're stepping outside how the world's been operating and you're choosing to be different, you need support. You need to have a community of people around you because otherwise you're trying to shift a pattern over here. And you're going back to your regular world and everybody's living the old way. It is so easy to slip into that pattern. Like if you go to a barber shop and you're hanging out there for a long time, you're eventually going to get a haircut. Okay. Um, so you need to have a group of people around you. All right. I've got that. Then I've got several different ways to work with me one on one. If you're looking for a more intimate experience, um, those are on my website as well. Additionally, we will be doing a retreat here. Y'all see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my artist rendition. <laughs> oh, I'm knocking everything over. That's my artist rendition of this place. That's pretty cool. In my work in progress house. All right, we'll be doing a retreat. Um, here in Northwest Arkansas, it is... Oz to Ozarks. It is a retreat to come and nourish you, mind, body, and soul. Um, get you tapped back into the garden. There is something about this place that when I pulled in that really brought me back to life. And, you know, one of the things that can make the biggest difference is getting you out of your old environment, out of your old way of being, and literally pluck you out and put you somewhere different for a little while. That lets you have a new experience of yourself. And as soon as you've had that, like as soon as you can taste the real you, as soon as you get to touch the real you, the truth of who you are, it will spark something inside of you. And then the key is just don't ever let her go. Okay. Um, and your whole big, new, beautiful life will begin to bloom from there. Okay. I love y'all so much. I hope you have a beautiful day and um, we'll chat soon. Bye.